how to write a sales page that sells. If you want to know why you need a sales page to sell your offer, and if you want to know what makes a sales page convert higher than the others, keep on watching. If we haven't met yet, I'm Karma Hunter, owner of KarmaDNA.com. I help coaches and online entrepreneurs plan their launches with evergreen systems and strategies so that they can scale to 10K months without social media and tech burnout. I see a lot of coaches and course creators struggle with their sales page. And this, this is most of the time because of two reasons. They either are not clear with the concept of a sales page or they're not clear with their offer. Today I'm here to share with you what makes a sales page convert so that you can apply these things to your own sales page and convert more clients. Let's first talk about what a sales page is and what's the difference between a sales page and a landing page and a home page. A sales page is a standalone page for one single paid offer. Unlike your home page, which may be talking about your business, your mission, a lot of different offers, some of your content, uh, news and updates, um, or unlike your landing page, which is mostly for a free offer or a deal and such, your sales page is specifically made for one single paid offer. So you're gonna ask me, why do I need a sales page? Isn't it bad they won't be able to see my other offers and they won't be able to read about my company? No, because your homepage is for your brand recognition, brand awareness, for your PR. Your landing page is for your lead generation, but sales page is specifically for conversion, specifically to sell one offer. And businesses convert at a higher rate when they send well-targeted leads to a specific offer that is made for them. It is that, oh yeah, that's me, I need that moment. That's what you wanna create. Because that's when we come to the clarity of your offer. Think about it this way. Let's say you're a confidence coach. Well, yeah, everybody needs confidence, this is true. But that's why you need to be clear with your niche and narrow down your target audience so that you can actually talk to them, speak to that ideal client directly when they come to that sales page. And that's what makes a sales page convert um, ultimately. Now we're gonna talk about some of the strategies that we can put in place to increase the conversion rate of this sales page but the clarity is the most important thing. So let's talk about what makes sales pages convert higher. First thing I get asked a lot is if design is important. The answer is yes and no. In this video, we're specifically talking about a sales page and we're specifically talking about Conversion. We're specifically talking about strategies to convert higher. So if we are looking at, a, looking at it from a conversion perspective and not from the branding perspective, design is not important when it comes to your branding. When it comes to your branding colors and the pictures and the fonts, it's really not important. So don't focus on that thing. The design is very important when it comes to the outline of your sales page and when it comes to the readability and user friendliness of your sales page. What do I mean by that? I mean, your sales page could be black and white. This is something that's done a lot and it is it converts very high. There are a lot of sales pages and a lot of long sales pages that are only black and white and they just have a few more additional colors maybe, but they convert. So it's not the colors, it's not the fonts. As long as it's readable, it's easy to read, then that's good. 
when we're talking about the design, the importance is the outline where the logical order of each section that makes up your sales page so that it keeps grabbing attention, it's easy to read, it creates that desire, it builds more and more interest and desire to buy that product. So that's what, what I mean when I say design is important from the outline, from the buyer psychology, from the conversion um, perspective, it is important. And we're gonna talk about this a lot more. Now, I'm also gonna give you, this Saturday, I have a um, free sales page workshop where I'm gonna give you the exact outline of a high converting sales page that you can basically rinse and repeat and use it for any sales page you're gonna be writing for the rest of your entrepreneurship. Of course, there are different ways of doing it too, but this is proven to be uh, one of the highest converting outlines. So I'll give you that outline. And if you wanna sign up for it, I'll leave the link below so you can sign up for it um, this Saturday. 5 p.m. Eastern Time Zone, and I'll leave the link below. Anyway, so the design is important from outline um, perspective. Also, the fonts. Now, fonts are not important unless they are readable. One specific tip I can give you is do not use cursive fonts. Don't try to look cute. Try to be clear try to be easy for your user try to be easy for the person who's reading this page so a lot of times cursive fonts are a lot um, more difficult to read and unless you're using a cursive font with one or two words that is a very big legible font try not to use this use a modern font that anybody can read easily Next thing I want to talk about is the most important part of your outline, your above the fold. You may have heard of this from me before, coming from a PR background and journalism, that's what's called. The, the first section of your page that someone sees as soon as they click on your page and as soon as your page opens up. This is the most important part and I can pretty much say Above the fold section of your page is pretty much the 50% of you making the sale. And here's what I mean. This is proven that 80% of the people leave your page after seeing above the fold. So above the fold is what you need to focus on when it comes to your copy the most so that you can capture whoever sees the above the fold and like the at first glance so that they want to read more about this offer and this is what i talk about a lot with my one-on-one -on -one clients as well or in my group sessions as well where i want to teach you guys the fundamentals of the marketing so that you don't have to Think of what to do with the next platform or with the next um, type of content or with the next, I don't know, feature of a platform that might come up. I want you to have this uh, perspective of marketing because once you think above the fold, this comes from really back in the days, old school journalism. But if you think about above the fold, it's your headline for your articles. It's your hook for your videos. It's your uh, hook for your Instagram captions. It's basically, however you're starting a piece of content is your above the fold. So as long as you start thinking whenever you create content and whatever type of content you create, as long as you start thinking you're above the fold, the things that the strategies that go into what makes an above the fold 
uh, compelling so it, it, it makes your audience read more or scroll down or, or watch more. You have this, you have this uh, knowledge and now you can apply it to pretty much any type of content you want. And that's what I want to do for you. And that's what I do when I teach evergreen content so that you can apply these to pretty much anywhere and you don't have to go ahead and take another course for the next platform that's coming up that you may need to use for your business. Anyway, so we said above the fold. Why is it the most important part? We talked about this because 80% of the people leave after the above the fold and this is your one chance to, to keep captivate people and make them want to read more of that sales page. Here's what you need to write at the top of your page. Call out your ideal client first. Like, are you a coach or entrepreneur? Are you a mom? Um, hey coaches. Um, hey, are you a corporate SKP? Whoever your ideal client is and whatever is gonna make them stop and be like, oh yeah, I am, or like, yeah, that's me. Call them out at the top of your page, sales page. Literally emphasize with what they're going through and talk about their struggle. After this, you're gonna start giving them a call to action because you want them to keep reading about it. So that's why you need to make your above the fold, the top of your page, very specific and you need to speak to that ideal client you have so that they can keep on reading. Now, next thing we wanna talk about is the strategy. How are you sending your leads to the sales page? If you have a high ticket offer, sending cold audience to your sales page is not gonna help you convert. Now, next thing I wanna talk about is the strategy. How are you bringing traffic to this sales page? Is your offer a small offer, a low ticket offer, or is it a high ticket offer? It makes a huge difference. Now, if you have a low ticket offer, you can send cold traffic to a low, low ticket offer. Or if you have a low ticket offer, you can create a short sales page. If you have a high ticket offer, you don't want to make a short sales page because people need to be convinced that they need your offer and they need to see some information and get clarity that they need this in order to buy this, in order for your sales page to convert. And we're gonna talk about a little bit more and the components of that in a little bit. But that's the reason why, number one, you wanna have a longer form sales page for your high ticket offer. Also, do not send cold traffic to your sales page. This is not gonna do you any good. Don't just think, oh, well, maybe somebody will buy. For that one person to buy, it's gonna take you so much traffic to bring to that page, especially if you're bringing cold traffic, and it's not gonna be sustainable for you. So how you send traffic to a sales page for especially a high ticket offer is very important. And that's why you don't put your sales page unless it's for a low ticket item, you don't put your sales page on your social media profiles. You don't put your sales page um, under your YouTube videos. You don't put your sales page as a call to action in your post. You don't put your sales page um, as a link while you are uh, on Facebook groups or while you're promoting your business. Why? Because those are lead generating activities. Those are not conversion activities. So you need to be very clear with that. The purpose of you doing those activities, those, those tasks, is to generate those leads so that you can turn them into warm leads and send warm traffic to that sales page so that you can convert. Because if someone sees your link, your sales page link on, in, in one of the Facebook groups or on LinkedIn, 
saying, hey, here's my offer, and they click on it, are they going to convert if you have an, an offer like 500 or over a thousand or two thousand dollar offer? No, because most of the time, the reason why people click on your link in social media profiles um, or, or in different content that we create online, especially organically, they click on it to see what you're about. They're not necessarily clicking on there because they are. Uh, intentionally and because they're motivated to buy it's all the times browsing purposes let me see what they got going on and they're 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 clicking on that link and that's the reason why if you want to generate leads you don't want to send them to a link like a sales page where you know you're not gonna convert through this channel with with, with your sales page um, and that's why you don't put your home page there because you're sending them to a jungle of offers where they're not going to be able to make a decision and they won't be able to actually take action. So that's why I don't recommend you to send cold traffic to your sales page. And instead, I'm recommending, recommending you send traffic to your landing page through your social media profiles so that you can capture those people's information. Because if you send someone to your sales page, they're gonna look at it, nice, great, now they know, but they're not gonna convert. Now, <laughs> you just sent them out in the orbit. You don't know who this person it was who was interested in your offer. So that's why you're doing the landing page instead of a sales page and your social media profiles for your lead generating activities so that you can capture their information. And that's why when it comes to strategy, when it comes to your sales page, only send traffic that is warm. Send your warm leads to your sales page who are already interested in your offer, who already you nurtured, or maybe after a training that you have done so that they already know what to expect, so that they're already intentional and they're already motivated a bit. And all the sales page does at the end of the day is to clarify your offer even more, get rid of their objections, and actually help them convert. So for that reason, here are other components you need in order to have a high converting sales page. We said the most important section was above the fold. Yes. After this, there are three very important components you need to have in your sales page in order to um, increase your conversion. And these components are talking about the benefits of your offer for your ideal client, not the features. Talk about the value that your offer has, not only how much it is, but what would it really cost or, or what is the transformation it's giving and how priceless it is and talk about this value. And social proof. Some testimonials from the clients that you've worked with before. And if you never worked with clients before, social proof from what you have accomplished and how this worked for you. So you need to include all of these components and this way you'll be able to show them the benefit of this offer and get rid of all the objections they may have and the last thing you need again one of the most important things almost as important as above the fold but it's your call to action and when i say call to action i don't mean the call to action at the very bottom of the page your call to action could be the button that you want them to click on that gives them the call to action. And this could pretty much be on multiple sections of your sales page, or it could be at the very bottom, of course, to take the same action. Don't give them multiple call to actions, only one call to action to do the one thing you want them to do. 
And those are the things that make a sales page convert. Like I said, we're going to have a free live workshop where I'm going to teach you how exactly to write your sales page so that you convert more clients. And I'm going to give you the outline of a seven figure sales page that you can rinse and repeat and use later on for any offer you may have and any sales page you may want to write after this. So I hope to see you there and take care.